lost. <laughs> it's been years since the last time I had a night terror that involved the hag. She's always been in the back of my mind, though. Just thinking about her disgusting, putrid body makes me gag. I've since replaced those horrid memories with those of a much sweeter time. My life has had many changes, from once being heartbroken and on the verge of destruction to that of a humbler place. I can't say that my life is fantastic, but it sure beats from where I came. I've since gotten a better job, still in security, and have set a course for myself on a much brighter path. However, I need to point out that no matter where you are in life, no matter how far you have traveled or how long it's been, sometimes things have a way of creeping back into your life. Just like the ruins of old, information and structures tend to be buried for centuries and are often uncovered to be showed to the world all over again. Though sometimes it isn't information or structures that are discovered, but the stuff of legends and myths. It is with a heavy heart and churning stomach that I relive this part of my life. I still work as a security guard and am currently contracted to a medical facility in my hometown. It is here that I discovered the unfortunate news of my nightmare's return. It was during the graveyard shift that the information was shared. I was stationed in the emergency department and had been asked by staff to keep an eye on a drunkard who had been brought in by the sheriff's department. The deputies had found the man face down in the middle of a street reeking of urine and cheap whiskey. The man had, according to officers, been harassing people outside of a bar. He had been shouting at people to give him booze and cigarettes. Witnesses told the deputies that once the man had found a half-smoked cigarette, he walked away down a nearby alley, and it was there that the deputies recovered him. The man was passed out at this point. The nurses had had some issue with him in the beginning, which was the reason I was there. Where once a man who had pitched a fit and cursed at the devil, now lay a docile, rundelled old dog, curled up and snored away. It had been an odd and quiet night for both the facility and the deputies, so with the little downtime that we had, we, the nursing staff, and deputies, and myself, all began conversing. We talked about the odd things we had run across and exchanged stories of tragedy and humor. It went on like this for what seemed like ages, so long that in fact I had forgotten that I was even working. I was about to step away to continue my normal routine, seeing as the nurses didn't need my help anymore, when one of the deputies started talking about the town I had just moved from. The deputy started talking about the disturbing things that he and his fellow officers had encountered during their tours of duty. The stories themselves had an eerie feel to them as they told us of things that would even baffle the strongest of believers. One such story hit too close to home. The deputy stated that it was on a night much like tonight that he and his partner had been called out to investigate a potential night prowler lurking about in a residential area. He said that someone reported there had been this strange-looking woman walking around outside their property. The reporting party told dispatch that she must have been under the influence because she had an odd twinge in her step, that she didn't walk normal. The deputy stated that they would be en route and asked dispatch for a description. The dispatcher paused for a moment. The radio silent and returned to say, RP advises that the woman is approximately seven feet tall, slender, possibly hunchback, wearing some kind of bird suit. The deputies were baffled. Say again, dispatch? The dispatcher repeated what she had stated. The deputies took note of the description, and they continued on their way. The group around us had a look of humor and confusion all mixed into one, except myself. The deputy stated that they had arrived on scene and scanned the area but could not find anyone outside matching the description. They had gone dark, which meant they shone off the lights to their squad car, 
and crept along still trying to find the tall bird-like woman. They radioed dispatch. Dispatch, can you ask RP if the person is still around? I'm not seeing anything here. He waited a moment. The radio was silent. He was about to ask again until suddenly his radio began to squeal. Both he and his partner had to cover their ears and turn the volume down. As soon as they did, a loud thud came from the roof of their car. The massive weight of whoever or whatever that was on their car had made a dent on the roof. The deputies drew their weapons and opened their doors. From out of nowhere, a loud screeching noise pierced their ears. It was the same noise the radio had made and from the roof of their vehicle jumped what appeared to be a tall woman, with a hunched back and wearing an odd feathery dress. The creature ran from the officers and scaled a nearby house. It climbed the wall and onto the roof of a garage. The deputy's guns drawn didn't know what to make of it. He stated that he started giving commands to the creature while his partner called for backup. He said that when he told the creature to put its hands up, it slowly turned its ugly head towards him like an owl's, showing him its terrible red eyes. The deputy said he nearly shit himself from what he had just witnessed, but continued to aim his weapon and gave more commands. After a few minutes of just staring one another down, the deputy's backup had arrived, and they could not believe their eyes. The deputies gave the creature one last command and stated that if it did not comply, they would use deadly force. The creature heard this and began to squawk. Mockingly, the deputy added, it raised its hands and in what they could describe as lightning fast, jumped from the roof and into the wooded area nearby. The deputy said they searched for hours looking for the creature but couldn't find a shred of evidence except for a huge dent left on their car. Everyone began to laugh nervously and told the deputies they were full of it. I, however, didn't feel very well as my stomach was in knots and I had a cold sweat beginning to beat on my forehead. There was something gnawing at me and I just had to know, so I asked the deputy if he knew the address of the residence the creature had been standing on. The deputy answered my question, and it was as I expected. It was my old house. I didn't tell the deputy, though, and instead asked him where the creature had run off to. The deputy shook his head, and what he said still sends shivers down my spine every time I think about it. He looked me dead in the eye and said, I walked into the woods near the house and came across this river along a foot trail that ended near a large rock.